further debate, the member for Mississauga Centre. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I am very happy to be back in the House uh, with my colleagues from my caucus as well as my friends across the aisle. You know, it seems just like yesterday that we returned for our summer sitting back in July. During that time, our government passed crucial legislation that no doubt helped Ontario weather the storm of COVID-19. More importantly, the work we accomplished positioned Ontario for a strong economic recovery as restrictions lessened and more and more people returned to work and school. Slowly but surely, Ontario is returning to something more familiar. By continuing to work together and abiding by our public health protocols, we are ensuring a bright future for our province, which prioritizes the health, well-being and economic prosperity of our people. I am very excited to be back today and to share stories from our ridings with colleagues, share best practices, and practice that much-needed peer-to-peer socialization. I missed you guys. Today has a very back-to-school feeling. Members wearing their crisp new suits and ties, proudly carrying their briefcases, wearing colorful homemade masks, sporting those much-coveted new haircuts, and yes, ladies, it feels good to have that Manny and Petty done once again. So before I begin my speech to, uh, to government notice of Motion 87, I would like to share with all of you a story which moved me this morning. Speaker, this morning I heard the owner of Tom's Place, Tom Mihalik, speak on the radio. Tom's Place is a men's custom tailor store located just a stroll away from here in Kensington Market. He was talking about reopening his store and what a positive experience it has been so far for his staff and customers. He also talked about his roots and his beginnings in Canada. Tom's father, William Mihalik, first came to Canada in 1956, after the Hungarian Revolution. Like many immigrants, William had little money, but he did possess a tremendous work ethic. He settled in Kensington Market and opened a store in 1987, selling secondhand clothing. He was joined by his family, including his son Tom, when Tom was age 12. And the rest is history. His story really resonated with me this morning, especially when Tom said that Canada is the best country in the world, full of opportunities and limitless potential. I can help but agree with Tom wholeheartedly. Another thing that Tom said this morning moved me very profoundly as I was driving in. He was talking about having the opportunity to meet with the Right Honorable Jean Chrétien and his wife Aline, who recently passed away. In that context, he said that we have great passionate and hardworking and proud politicians in Canada, motivated to make Canada the best country it can possibly be. Regardless if they are conservative, liberal, NDP, green, they work hard for our country and we are fortunate to have them and that Canadians owe them a debt of gratitude. Speaker, it is not very often that you hear people publicly praising politicians. I was very moved to hear those kind words such a profound contrast to what I have sadly become accustomed to hearing. So dear colleagues, on behalf of Tom, I want to express my deep and profound gratitude to each and every one of you for your hard work, for your tireless efforts in helping your constituents during this pandemic, for the courage of your convictions, and for all the sacrifices you make each and every day to make Ontario a home we can all be proud of. With that, Speaker, I'd like to lead the debate on Government Notice of Motion 87, advancing Bills 131, 154, 180, and 182 to third reading. I am very humbled that my own private member's Bill 182 is being advanced, and I have to say that I find myself in great company with the members from Mississauga East Cooksville, Parkdale High Park, and York Southwestern. Madame la Présidente, je prends la parole au... Madam Speaker, I'm taking the floor today to proudly speak of my private member's bill, Bill 182. Bill 182 amends the Franco-Ontarian Emblem Act so that the, Fran the Franco-Ontarian flag becomes an official emblem of Ontario. This flag will therefore be recognized as the emblem of the Francophone community as well as an emblem of the province itself. And, Madam Speaker, as we have heard many times throughout history, symbols count. This act represents the efforts of our government to promote 
and build better relations with the Franco-Ontarian community. By recognizing this Francophone symbol, we're doing more than simply uh, flying a flag and saying that it has a provincial legitimacy. It illustrates our commitment to recognize the long and rich history of Francophones in our country, which goes back 400 years. It shows uh, the Franco-Ontarians' place in the diverse cultural mosaic of Ontario. But even more importantly, as one of the founding nations of Canada. In my time as Member of Provincial Parliament for Mississauga Centre, I have enjoyed a strong and robust relationship with the Francophone community. Yet this relationship, I feel, has grown stronger and has been even more fulfilling during the pandemic we have all come to find ourselves in. COVID-19 has undoubtedly presented immense challenges to the people of Ontario. Life, as we know, has been turned upside down. It brought forward new challenges and barriers, barriers to vulnerable members of our community. Residents in my riding who are elderly or immunocompromised have had to deal with a new and difficult reality. They had to become exceedingly stringent on their interactions with the outside world. But even with challenge and adversity, Ontario's spirit is a light that shines bright and cannot be dimmed. Many community groups in my riding stepped up to ensure that our most vulnerable, our neighbours, were taken care of and had what they needed to get through this difficult time. It was not only the right thing to do, it was the Canadian thing to do. I had the pleasure of working with groups and businesses such as the Hope Sisters, mm -hmm. GTA Outreach, United Together, Biogen, New Genesis, Toronto Microelectronics, Pasta It Forward, Feed It Forward, Conquer COVID, Classic Nails and Beauty Supply, Polish Canadian Women's Federation, Gold Collagen, and the Taiwanese Association of Canada, and many others. Beside these fantastic groups made up of inspiring people, I was able to work with a group whose mission was to serve Francophones in and around the greater Toronto area. The Francophone Centre for the Greater Toronto is a non-profit which provides uh, services to Francophones in the Greater Toronto Area thanks to a diverse array of services the Centre uh, meets the needs of Francophones in, greater, in the Greater Toronto Area The, si the scope of the services is very much uh, impressive. Like, uh, they occasionally labor in obscurity, but they make sure that the Francophone community is healthy and prosperous. This uh, Francophone Center for the Greater Toronto Area offers everything, healthcare services, counseling services for mental health, as well as services that help with the integration of new Francophones. It also provides services which allows Greater Toronto Area Francophones, including those of Mississauga, to access uh, job uh, opportunities. But during the COVID-19 pandemic, the Francophone Center for the Greater Toronto Area added a new service to this list to make sure that vulnerable people had what they need to weather the storm. I met the executive director of the center, Florence, Nezem Buhoro, and we discussed various uh, awareness-raising efforts over the last month. Together, we, have, we delivered meals to seniors stuck in their homes for their own good. Florence and I, with our teams, gave more than just meals. We strive to give a feeling of community and belonging to people who no doubt felt the pain of loneliness and isolation. Social isolation and the loneliness that accompanies it has been another area of concern for these community groups during the pandemic. And leveraging their incredible ability to reconnect people, they found even more ways of helping our most vulnerable. And I could not thank them enough for what they have done. Truly, it is our unsung community heroes and our can-do Ontario spirit that will get us to the other side of this pandemic. I had the pleasure of collaborating alongside Florence and the Centre Francophone du Grand Toronto with other local Francophone groups, for example, the Centre d'Accueil Héritage, to ensure local residents had much-needed personal protective equipment and essential health supplies. 
In fact, our work with Centre d'Accueil Héritage was done in conjunction with a colleague of mine across the floor, the member from Spadina Fort York. As our Premier said, there is no blue team, no orange team, and no red team. There is only one team, Team Ontario and Team Canada. And this is true also in the spirit with the other private members' bills being brought forward in today's government's notice of motion. First, Bill 154, the Stop Cyberbullying in Ontario Day Act, put forth by my colleague from Mississauga East Cooksville, is an important piece of legislation that puts much needed attention on an issue facing Ontario students. This act marks the third Friday of June in each year as Stop Cyberbullying Day in Ontario. Bullying is a difficult stressor that imposes not only an immense physical health cost on its victims, but also an immense emotional and mental health cost too. As a government that promised from the beginning of its mandate to prioritize the mental health of Ontarians in the same way that we prioritize physical health, cyberbullying is something that must be addressed. I am extremely proud of the funding that our government has committed to the mental health of Ontarians, ensuring that there are numerous resources and tools available to each and every person that needs them. Initiatives such as this bill put forward by my colleague are important for ensuring that the conversation surrounding mental health is always on the public mind and to finally end the stigma. Our students must know that supports and help are always available if they find themselves to be victims of cyberbullying or bullying of any kind for that matter. They can access, for example, connectsontario.ca or the kids' help phone line at 1-800-668-6868. Another bill that is being brought forward today is Bill 180 mm -hmm. by my colleague, the member from York Southwestern marks June 25th to July 1st as Somali Heritage Week, whereby the province of Ontario recognizes the numerous contributions Somali Ontarians have made to our economy, our cultural institutions, and to our society at large. Furthermore, Bill 131, put forward by the member from Parkdale High Park, marks the month of July each year as Tibetan Heritage Month, recognizing the social, political, and economic contributions of the Tibetan community to both Ontario and Canada. I would also like to congratulate the member for being the first Canadian of Tibetan origin to be elected into office. July was chosen due to the significance of this month to the Tibetan community, with July 6th being the birthday of His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, Tenzin Gyatso, who is also an honorary Canadian citizen. Both of these aforementioned bills are all quite interconnected in that they all look to strengthen the diverse cultural mosaic that is Ontarian society today. Whether it is the Franco-Ontarian community, the Somali-Ontarian community, or the Tibetan-Ontarian community, each grouping of people holds a unique part in our equitable and diverse cultural landscape. Each grouping of people has had their own countless contributions to make our province the world-class place that it is today, to live, work, worship, and play. Legislation like these two bills are both symbolic and important. They are an affirmation of the belonging of their respective communities, bringing to light and recognizing their respective accomplishments, as well as serving as a reminder that the components of Ontarian civil society are incredibly diverse and international. I would like to conclude by saying that I'm proud of all my colleagues in the House who chose to create a bill that spoke to both their own identity as well as stakeholders in their constituencies. It is no doubt a difficult task, but as elected representatives, I believe we can all agree that the feeling of your work being passed is unmatched. I know that much bipartisan cooperation went into making each and every single one of these bills. And that sort of spirit, I hope, is something that continues here in the House as we settle back in to do the great work for the people of Ontario over the next several months. Thank you to everyone, especially those that helped to make my own bill, Bill 182, a reality. It simply could, could not have been done without your help, support, and your encouragement. I'm looking forward to being back to represent the residents of Mississauga Centre and help our government steer the province forward as we begin, begin our road to recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. 
It's great to be back because we are all better together two years apart. Thank you, Madam Speaker.